Hi everyone. Today again, I will be uh, showing you the next part of the function. So we have already covered the first part of the function where we have checked few things like, let me go uh, to those pages. What we have covered, what we have already covered is like, okay, the prerequisite, suppose if you are starting from this class, then I will request you to go through the, uh, we have already covered the first part. So first cover that part, then come into this class, okay? So what we have covered already, let me show you. The first thing is function as a copy paste thing. So you do not need to write any new logic for function. It is just whatever we have done, we just need to, uh, just we need to copy and paste that part into some function so that we can reuse that, okay? So one of the advantages of function is reusing the code. If, if one code is needed three times, you do not need to write that code three times. You can put it inside a function and you can call that function three times, okay? So that is, that is what we have learned. We have also learned how to return something from a function, okay? So that also we have learned. So let me go to the topic three now. So as I was mentioning, advantages of a function was we have major two advantages of using function. That is reusability that I have just explained. And the second thing is modularity. So today I'll be focusing on modularity. So what is modularity? Suppose I have a work and I need to distribute that work into my team. So suppose uh, let me define a work like uh, what I give some, uh, I, I used to give this example in my offline classes as well. Suppose I am talking about online what to PDF converter. So where uh, I can go to any of those softwares. So here, I need to choose a word file from my uh, location. So suppose I am choosing assignment three. So I, I, I do not know anything. I'm just choosing my file, any file. Then I need to just click on convert PDF. It is converting the word to PDF and I can download simply. Okay. So now if I, it is, it is being downloaded in some location. Okay. By somehow it is downloaded. Okay. I'm not going into that way. It is that simple. So, if I want to segregate, if I want to distribute that task to my team members, suppose I have a team of uh, four members or five members, so I need to segregate that. So what I will do, I will give a task to person one, like upload a file, upload a file from user location to programmer location. Obviously I need to upload that file and I need to send that file to somewhere. I do not know. I'm just selecting the location. So. The task of person one will be upload a file from user given location. User will choose that file from his machine. And I need to move that file to programmer's location. That is the first task I, I can give the, give it to the person one. So my next team member, the person two, I will give a task like convert a file from word to PDF and store their location. Person three will be responsible to uh, take that file and uh, take that file from programmer's location and download that or download, it means down, the meaning of download it, uh, download means copy that to user's location, user's download folder or user's location simply. So now obviously they will be coming up with for loops. They will be coming up with variables. They will be coming up with some if else statements, many things can be there. So I have just shown you the normal way of uploading and downloading the file. It, there can be some exceptions, some unique things as well. So I, uh, suppose they have written some raw, raw for loop codes using I, suppose something like this dot dot dot. Some person has written something like if I equals to some codes like that. So I cannot without knowing the meaning, without knowing the logic, I cannot combine them up. It will be tough. In a real time project, suppose where few thousands lines of codes are written by few hundreds of developers. So at that project, it is it is simply impossible to understand the meaning of 
of their code to know the meaning of the logic and combine them. It is, it is simply impossible. Okay, so here what we do, we just simply ask that person one, like, okay, you will be receiving one input from user, that is say location one, create a function called upload, which will take a parameter called location one. We have already taken some parameters like this. In the time function, we have taken this as a parameter. So this is being called as a parameter, okay? So just need, you need to know the name. It, it might also be called like parameter or argument. If I mark this, this has been called as parameter or argument. So you need to remember that, okay? So here I will ask uh, uh, the person one like, okay, uh, you will be, the user will be giving one location to you. That will be called location one. And you need to save that file to somewhere location two. Your input will be location one and you will be returning something that I will store into location two. The second programmer, I will give some task like in location two, you just convert the file, convert the file. And I will be giving you one location and the file will be available at that location. You just need to convert that file from what to PDF. You do not take that tension. You do not take the stress how to download that into the user's location. And third uh, option, the third person will be responsible for writing the download option. So I will I'll provide them a location too. And there will be one PDF. Simply there will be a PDF, how that PDF came there how it is available in that location. You do not need to think about that. You just simply need to just put that, put some logic so that the file from location two will be downloaded into some location three. What I have done, I have uploaded one folder and it was uh, downloaded. I have uploaded one folder and it was downloaded somewhere in my download folder. And I uploaded that from some, from some arbitrary location. I can, I can upload that from anywhere. Okay, so just it needs to download that into location three. For user like me, he will choose the file from location one and he will get the file at last in the download folder. User will not be able to know what is happening inside. Okay, so if they provide this type of code, I can simply, if they provide this type of function, I can simply Okay, void main, I can simply add them in our main function. That's all. I do not need to know whatever is written inside, whatever for loops has been written inside, whatever if statements has been written inside, I just simply call them one by one. That's all. I, I shouldn't say one thing uh, on record, but uh, we I uh, in our training days, uh, in our first project, there was one senior um, who joined our project and believe me, he used to write all the codes by themselves. Uh, they have a two person team, two or three person just write everything. They do not, uh, they uh, didn't used to coordinate with us. So what we do uh, at the end, what we used to do, uh, all the codes, we just take all, we take all the codes from him and we just used to shift and delete. Okay, I, we, uh, I'm, not, I'm not mentioning the name of that person. He was senior to me. Uh, one or two years senior to me. Uh, so uh, he joined uh, Cognizant at that time after uh, completing the MCA. We were, uh, we joined after completing BTEC. So, but anyway, uh, we used to delete his code, uh, unfortunately, because uh, he was uh, like, he never gave the code using a function. They just shared the code in a raw, raw way. And it is quite impossible to understand all of his code and put that inside somewhere, it is, it is really impossible. But, uh, but I'm not taking that name. So, but we used to delete the code every day. Every day he provided the code and we just, uh, just deleted that code. Okay, so anyway, that was a bad part. Uh, we need to suggest something, but at that time, we didn't have any idea like, okay, uh, we, we can use something like a function. Okay, so function is being used to, to do this kind of uh, modular thing. So suppose you are doing some uh, big work. If you want to segregate, if you want to distribute the work between your team members as per the as per some logic and as per some uh, like some simple small module of work, then function will be the best part. So let me take some examples. 
let me do some real time project real time uh, programs now so if i am talking about modularity suppose this is the program enter a number and find if it is emir from not so what is the definition of emir if a number and it reverse both are prime then we call it as emir number so as an example what is emir number 13 is an emir number because 13 and 31 both are prime whereas 23 is not an emir number why because the reverse of 23 that is 32 that is not a prime obviously 32 is divisible by 2 so it is not a prime so if the number and its reverse both are prime then i need to uh, call him call it as a emif number so if i give this task to my team and if i need to distribute that work i will distribute in I, I will distribute that in two or three ways first i can i can tell someone like okay give me the program of checking prime so suppose we have already written that program so let me copy that and let me paste suppose let me delete all this thing let me copy and paste so this is someone i, I do not need to know the meaning okay uh, i do not need to if you forget the last class you you uh, will in last class we we build that function so just do not need to um, do not need to uh, understand the logic inside so this is the logic by which i can get the prime or not okay so someone i have requested to find the logic of getting reverse so reverse logic also we have done uh, during uh, our for loop application classes if you can remember so we are doing the same thing here we are just inputting suppose someone uh, to whom i have given the responsibility he is just taking one value as input and he is returning the reverse value that's all he or she doesn't require to understand the overall requirement i have given a task like i will be giving you one value you just need to calculate the reverse and return the reverse that's all and here to this person i have given a task like i will give you one value and you just need to check and you just need to return true or false if the value is prime then return true if the value is not prime return false that's all so now what i will do here let me write the program let me take one input from user using scanner class let me take a value input enter a number say and suppose in 10 equals to s n or any value x let it be sc dot next int and now what i will do i will use this reverse function suppose i am the third person in the team and i have uh, my team members has already provided two functions so i what i will do without understanding the inner logic what is uh, what is written inside i will just use their functions i will use a variable called y that will be used to get the reverse of x i will just send x and i will get the reverse into y it is that simple and after that i will simply check if is prime if x is prime and then if if uh, y is prime if the number and its reverse both are prime, then I will. I'm going to print. It is a bit number. Got it? I do not need to understand the meaning. If I try to understand the meaning, it will be that tough. So I have segregated the task into three independent parts, and that can be done only by using function. Just try. If you do not believe on that, if you still not uh, convinced, like okay, this is a real example or real advantage of function. So I will request you to do the same program without using function and you can you can feel the pain okay so just try that and you will be convinced like what is the advantage of function so if i run this function first without knowing or without understanding what is written inside prime and reverse uh, program reverse function just let me put the value 13 is an emit let me just check if it is working or not and if i go if i give 23 it will be saying okay okay so that's the thing we need to do all right if you are still uh, doubtful let me go to the next program and let me present it in some different way suppose it is uh, it is asking enter a number and find if it is krishnamurti number or not so what is krishnamurti number where the sum of factorial of digits 
it is not one plus four plus five it is factorial of each digit one factorial plus four factorial plus five factorial it becomes 145 once again so those numbers are being called as a krishnamurti number okay so in this case let me present it in some other way um, suppose let me first take the number as input okay let me delete all these things so let me take one number okay just one thing before deleting this I can make another thing here, another uh, smart, I can follow another smart way here. Uh, so in this program, I forgot to mention, I can store the reverse X value into Y. If you want, you can directly use that value here itself. Do not need to do it uh, in a old way. You do not need to store that value into some variable. You can simply use that value here. You can simply use that value here inside is prime. So that is a smarter way of doing programs. Okay. Instead of storing that value inside Y and reusing that, it is better to use that function under another function directly. Okay. And it will be a good way to write a program. Okay. At least uh, there will be no advantages you will get, but yeah, it is a smarter way. And at least your friend will be saying, okay, wow, what a smart way, kind of that. I used to say that to my friends, uh, in my college days, I was really scared of. So at that time, uh, they 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 used to follow this kind of smart way, and I was I was really impressed. I couldn't do that thing in my college days actually. So whatever it is, uh, so we can use a function inside another function. Okay, that I proved. Anyway, let me now delete this program, and let me go to this requirement: the find the Krishnamurti number. So what I will do first, I will take one number as input. And after that, I will try to find the sum of digit. The sum of digit. So to get the sum of digit, what I need to do in sum equals to zero. What I can remember for a loop, I will use one for loop in i equals to x. All these programs are based on the for application part. So if you are doubtful with the logic, how smoothly I'm writing all those for loops, I will request you to go to that 3.3 for application class in this playlist and you will be able to understand what am I doing. So it is all, all about the old programs. I'm not talking about the logics. I'm, I'm talking about today how to use that efficiently. So the, all the logics are already done in our for application classes, the reverse, the prime, everything we have done earlier. So now if I can write something like this, so it will face the sum of digits. So if I check, if I give 145, it should return 1 plus 4 plus 5. That is, uh, that is uh, 10. Yeah. So 145, if I give, it should return 10. Yeah, sum is 10. So now, first, rather writing the function, rather instead of going, jumping into the program, first think about some requirement. Do not jump into the program first. Do not jump into the code first. First think, if I can get some, some functions like this, by which I can readymately get the factorial, it will be that nice thing. If I have something like that, if I have something like that, where I can quickly find the factorial of a value and I use that inside sum, so that would be great. So I'm, what I'm trying to do, sum equals to sum plus factorial of that digit. So that would be so great if I can have something like that. So first create the requirement. Again, if you are, if you are looking like uh, to use the function efficiently, so do not jump into the function first. First create the requirement. So here, if I can have something like that, then it would be great. Then I will request some of my team members, okay, can you prepare that function for me where I can give input a number? and I will get the factorial ready-made ha in hand. So I, I, I will not focus on the logic. You write it uh, for me, and I just I, I will just input one number, and in return, I will get the factorial. That is the requirement. So now that team member will come up with one program. So we have already written that in our last class or in our for loop classes. So do not need to know the meaning written inside. But if you are able to understand the meaning, that is great, but you do not need to 
understand the logic written inside but it is a simple logic to get the factorial so we have already did that we have already written that code in our last class so what it is doing it is taking one input as n and returning the value as n i do not care what are the variables they have used inside i will use that name i will use that name fact that's all so if i run our program is almost done so if i run this program it should return the value 145 itself if i input 145 the sum of factorial of the digits is also 145 you can see that so what i do now i will simply without printing the sum i will simply write if x equals to equals to sum or not if it is then i will print it is krishnamurti number or i will say simply yes otherwise i will print no that's all i hope you got this idea how i'm writing the program so try to distribute your load try to distribute different logics into different team members by using function you can ask them like okay i need a function like a uh, factorial and please prepare that for me i will I, i do not want to look inside i do not want to know what are the logics you are using i will simply input a value and in return i will i should get a factorial value of that digit or of that number that's all so this is how we build the program in real time in real projects okay if a single person starts thinking of all the things uh, the project will not be delivered it will not be completed completed okay so if i go to the next program enter a number and print if all the digits are prime like uh, as an example 532 all the digits are prime 532 as a number is not prime because it is divisible by uh, it is divisible by 2 but if you take a look into each and every digits so 5 as a digit is prime 3 as a digit is prime 2 as a digit is prime you can see 5 is a digit as a prime 3 is prime 2 is prime that's why i can say all the digits are prime but in in contradiction here 6 is not prime so i i will say uh, it is sure that all the digits are not prime so that we need to follow and i will i will uh, request you to do the same program without using function first if you if you just pause the class and just write the program uh, without using function with our conventional logic like using for loops using all those things it will be that complicated believe me you can you can just try okay pause the class and you can try and if I, if you have already tried and now let me do the same program using function so first what i will do i will request someone to write a prime prime number logic so let me copy that prime number logic first yeah i it is ready the prime number logic someone has written that for me so what i will do i will just simply input a value and it will return if the number is prime or not that's all so now what i will do i will check each digit first so to check each digit i do not need sum and all i will check each digit so how to check each each digit it is very simple system we have already done the sum in our last program so here i will just print i percentage 10 or let it be like uh, int d equals to i percentage 10 and i will check if i will i will i will just print the value of d that's all let me delete all this these are not required yeah so if i compile and if i just run the code suppose i am giving okay 532 itself so 2 3 and 5 will be fetched out okay so now what i will do here i will introduce a variable called int f equals to 1 say you do not need to understand what is written inside okay what i am doing here uh, i am just writing int f equals to 0 let it be so if without printing all the d all the digits d for digits i will just check if is prime any digit is not prime if equals to false then what will i do i will just simply change the value to 1 that's all at the end if i check 
if f equals to equals to zero, that means all the digits are prime. I can say yes, all the digits are prime. I can say all digits are prime. And if somehow the value is changed to one, that means some of the digits, at least one digit is not prime, it is false. So that means all the digits are not prime and if the value of f is changed to one, so that means I can say all digits are not prime. Got it? So it is that simple to use. But if you if you do not go for the function approach, if you want to do that using old traditional way, using uh, for loops, obviously we are using for loops here as well. But if you do not take the advantage of function, that program is really tough to build. You can, you can try, simply you can try and all the answers you will get. So if I run this program and if I give the same input like 532, it will check all the digits individually and it is saying all the digits are prime. If I input 631, let me input 631 and it will say all the digits are not prime because six is not prime, okay? So that is the logic. You do not take all the stress, distribute your work, distribute the stress between all of your team members and you can do a part of the program, okay? And if you use function, that will be really easier for you. So now the next program is enter an array and find the sum of the palindrome number. So now again, okay, if you are, uh, if you have not completed the chapter array, you can skip this question. Simply you can skip this question. But if you have done the programs in array, then we can check this, the logic uh, we can reuse or we can distribute. It can be applicable anywhere. It, it can be applicable to anywhere. It can be applicable to matrix programs. It can be applicable to uh, uh, array programs anywhere you can apply. So first, let me take an uh, take an input of array, and let me print that print those values. So let me delete this uh, prime functions, and let me write the program. Okay, I will I will keep uh, my screen on hold uh, for one minute, and let me write the program for you. The how to take an input in array and how to display those values. Just give me one minute. All right, the program is ready. What I'm doing now, I am taking the number of elements. I am de uh, declaring one array with n size. I am entering the elements. Okay, I have written something wrong. It's we start from zero. Array always starts from zero. But again, do not need to take the stress of array programming. We will just try to check how we can call a function inside. So here I'm just printing the value. So if I run this program once, just to check if it is working fine or not. So suppose, okay, it is asking for the number of elements. Suppose I'll be giving five elements, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50, and it is just printing elements back. So that's all. So now what is the requirement? Let me check. It is asking for find the sum of the palindrome numbers. Okay. So, okay. I hope there will be some example. Yeah. So here, if I give 23, 121, 545, 145, and 77. So it will get the sum of 121, 545, and 77. Why? Because they are palindrome numbers. What is palindrome numbers? The number which is similar with its reverse. So if you if you just take the reverse of 545, it is also 545. If you take the reverse of 121, it is also 121. So I will not take the whole stress. I will I will imagine, I will imagine like if somehow there is a function called palindrome. If someone build that for me, first create the requirement again. Suppose if there is any function like is palindrome, I will just provide the AI, the value of the array, and it will return true or false, and then only I can print the value. If someone build that for me, that will be nice. I will just simply use that here. I will simply use that here. And it will just say, yes, it is palindrome. Then only I will print the value. Okay. But so that would be nice if someone build that for me. So let me create that function here. So I can write something public, uh, static. Suppose it will return true or false. So Boolean uh, is, uh, what is the name? Is palindrome. So it will take one value as input in 10. And what I need to do here, if the value is equals to equals to, 
Okay, again, let me imagine some function. If someone build that for me, a reverse function, if the value is e equals to equals to reverse of that value, then I will return true. Simply, otherwise I will return false. I otherwise I will return false. That's all. So now, if someone build that reverse function for me, I think it is already built. Let me check. Let me check. Yeah. So let me just reuse that. Suppose some of my team members has done that for me. So I will just simply reuse that. Okay. Again, do not need to follow the logic. The logic written inside to find the uh, reverse, it, it, it is quite normal that you do not know the logic, what is written inside. It is written by someone else. Do not take the stress, uh, the whole stress of the program. So you can take a part of the program. You can take a responsibility of a part of program. So now our program is completed, you can see. So what I'm doing, I'm checking if the number is palindrome or not. It is simply palindrome function is simply checking it is equals to the reverse of that number or not. And this program is simply checking, uh, returning the reverse of a number, simply, simply. So if I uh, do that and let me run the program now, suppose let me, run this program so suppose uh, i will deal with five numbers 10 20 121 suppose 77 and 50 so obviously it will print only 121 and 77 only the palindrome numbers which is equals to the reverse of that number so now i can simply do the sum as well so that is not that tough so i will just write in sum equals to zero and here i will write sum equals to sum plus a i that's all that's all all right but believe me if you try this program without using function that would be too tough i have seen 95 percent of cases uh, my students were not able to complete this program they are stuck in some midway they have they are confused of using variables just try that then it will be more convincing for you why should we use function okay so this is the whole program all about so now as we have completed we have checked several programs of functions so now i will show you some examples of theoretical knowledges so what theoretical knowledges we need to crack the viva or to crack the interview so these are quite common topics that has been asked during the interviews when i take the interview uh, or when I appeared as an interviewee on the interview rounds, uh, my, uh, my concept was like, uh, I will not memorize everything. I will not memorize all the definitions. You do not need to memorize all the definitions. Suppose I'm talking about call by values. Do not memorize the definitions because anyhow, they will be checking how much idea you have on that topic. If you say the definition, then also, they will ask some cross question and they will check how confident you are on this topic. So it is better to present your code, uh, present your uh, concept using some codes. Just write some codes for them and always use simple codes. Do not go for some bigger chunk of codes or bigger chunk of programming. Just prove your concept using some simple line of code. So here, let me prove these things as well. So. Uh, let me delete all those big things. Now we have done several things and so quickly using function. So let me delete all these things. What I will do, suppose let me take one variable in text equals to 10. Simply write this program in front of your uh, interviewers. Okay. So I have, I have seen the same phenomenon when I have seen some of my friends or some of my colleagues are taking interviews. They are also focusing on the on the concept they are not going for like okay how much you can remember how much you can memorize the definition it is not like that okay so you need to know the concept so suppose i am introducing one simple function called guha uh, that is my name actually so i can simply you can simply use any name so i can simply write a guha function and here i am what i'm doing i'm taking that input index and what i'm doing x equals to x plus one so now the question is what will be the output here? 
what will be the output if i print x what will be the output what i'm doing i am taking x equals to 10 i am sending that value into that guha function where it is saying like receiving x and x equals to x plus 1 so now if i print the what will be the value will it be 11 or will it be 10 or any other values so if i run it will be 10 okay the value will not be changed why because you are sharing the value only you are sharing the value this x in main function is not similar with this x coincidentally the values look same or i have used the same value to confuse you but actually this is some other variables either you can use a or you can use x even but this x is not similar to our x it is a, it is be it is to be considered as a different planet or a different function i i considered it in a, this way like it is a different planet it is our earth and it is a different planet so this x and this x is not same so suppose over the phone someone ask you like you like what is your age you, you have told like okay my age is 25 and what he did over the phone on the other side of phone he just do the uh, like plus 10 it becomes 25 plus 10 35 but it doesn't matter for you if he is incrementing the value if he is decrementing the value if he is manipulating or changing the value it doesn't matter to you because your value will remain as 25 here it is happening the same the same is happening so x equals to 10 your value you are you are telling your value to someone and that person is just incrementing your value by one. But still, in your case, x will be still 10. It will not be 11. But yeah, here in this function, it will be 11. But in your case, in the value of x in our planet, in main function, it will remain x because you are sharing the value. So this value sharing is being called as a call by value. Okay, so that is the concept. And it is, it is frequently asked during the interview, so like what is the difference between call by value and by and call by reference so obviously we are not in a situation to explain call by reference now so i will explain that later obviously but for the time being you need to know call by value and i will i will mention call by reference when the time comes okay so this is being called as a call by value so now what is function signature simple if uh, if, if anyone is looking for function signature so this part is being called a function signature without the return type, without the return type, only function name and the parameter list. Here we are taking only one parameter. So this will be the function signature. The function signature will be Guha in text, that's all. If anyone is asking about the function signature. So now, uh, if anyone is asking for function prototype, function prototype means the full thing. With, the, with return type, everything is being called as a function prototype. Okay. Function prototype means void, guha, index, that part. The signature is this part only and prototype means the full part with return type. Got it. So these are just the definitions, uh, just the theories. Uh, function declaration and function definition. In some languages, you need to write, in some languages like C, you need to write the function before the main function. Here, we are using Guha function, you can see. So we need to write the Guha function before main function. But here in Java, we do not have any uh, restriction. We can write it anywhere. Even we can write it uh, below the main function like that. If I compile, it is successfully compiled. But in some languages like C language, you can follow the uh, function class in language C playlist. You will be checking all the function we are writing on the top. Anyhow, if you want to write that, after the after the main function then what you need to do you need to just declare the first line you need to declare the first line okay like this L like i i am declaring this function here before main function and you can find this function after the main function so do not search i am declaring that like i will be writing one function after the main function like this i will write the definition so but in java it is not applicable we do, it doesn't matter if you write the function after main function or before function it doesn't matter at all but in some languages like c it matters so this line 
is being called as a declaration function declaration and this part the whole part is being called as a definition where you are writing the actual working principle in this case it is very simple but yeah we have already checked some functions like prime like reverse there might be some uh, difficult logic Okay, so this is being called as a definition and this is being called a declaration. But again, in Java, we do not have anything like anything such in Java. Okay, you can write the function anywhere. Okay, so that's the thing. If you're not able to understand, just write it in the comment box. I will I will try to give some more examples. If I if possible, I can paste a code from C language itself. What happens in C? I will uh, I will try to uh, give some examples to make you understand. Okay. So next is pure and impure function. So what is pure and impure function? Suppose your function is suppose, okay, let me, for the first time, let me write our variable inside class. Obviously, I will explain why I am writing static, why I am writing all those things later, but for the time being, let me write x equals to 10. So whenever I'm calling Guha, the fun, the, that function, that will be actually incrementing the value so every time i will get different values so it depends number of calls it depends number of executions so if i am calling guha two times then i will i will get the value as 12 first time as 11 next time as 12 because it is now a global value it is not some value i'm not sharing any value you can see i'm not sharing i'm not sharing the value x i'm just simply doing plus one so the value is now global. It is not the, under our planet or it is not under the Guha planet. It is global. So this value is common. Whenever I'm calling this function, it is just incrementing that value. So it is no more call by value. Okay, remember, I'm not sending any value like I'm not sending X. It is now global. So if I change the value here, it will be reflected here as well. So this is being termed as an impure function because if I run it multiple times, I will get multiple results. You can see first time it is 11, then it is 12. So I have to be very cautious like how many times I am executing that. Um, without thinking anything, I cannot use that function because I have to be cautious because that every time I'm calling this function, the value is being changed. But if I use the functions like this, the factorial, if I use the function like this, I do not need to be worried how many times I'm calling this. Every time it will be returning the same thing. It is independent, I will say. Without using Guha, if I if I call the function fact x, fact 5 or fact x, say, every time it will give me the same answer. So factorial of 10 is, I don't know. I don't know. Not that good in mathematics. But if I run, it returns three six two eight eight zero something. Uh, so every time I call this value, every time it will give the same output. So I do not need to think like okay, how many times I'm calling this. I I do not need to think anything else. I am giving just value and I'm returning one. That's all. Every time I'll be returning the same thing. So this function is being called as a pure function where I do not need to take any stress. And that is the real beauty of function. So this function is being called as a pure function because we do not need to take the stress. It is not like I am uh, giving some input. If you do not use some input, suppose let me write some input uh, function like Deva. And if I just simply write system.out.println, this function is also pure because every time it is just printing high or something like that. Okay. So every time I'm printing that function, it is it is printing high or something like that. It doesn't matter how many times I'm running. I do not have any stress in my mind. So it is being called as a pure function. Okay, okay. It should be void because I'm not returning anything. Yeah. But this is called impure function because I have to be cautious how many times I am using that because every time it is changing the value. Suppose this value is being used by someone else. So I have to be cautious like, okay, I have to use it once or I have to use it twice, not more than that, then the value will be changed. If someone else, some other programmers are using the same variable, it might impact his program. Okay, so I need to be very cautious. So that is what a pure and a impure function is called. Okay, and that is the exact concept of pure and impure function. So now, if I go to the last topic for the day, that is function overloading. So what is function overloading? 
you cannot use the same name twice. Again, do not go for the tough examples. Always go for the simple example. Just print I, hello, those things. I have seen uh, why in the interview rounds, the people try to uh, put some tough logic. Why should you use some tough logic? Just simply print I and hello. So there is two function, Guha, and I am using I and hello. Inside one function, it is written hi. Inside one function, it is written hello. Though it is giving the error, you can see it is already giving some error that uh, it is already defined. But suppose if it is not giving the error, and if you are calling, if I say, if I ask you, which function should it call? The hello one or the hi one? Obviously, you will also be confused because both look same. If you say it should print hello, I will argue. I, I will. I will go for an argument with you. Like why not hi? If your answer is hi, then I will go for an argument. Like why not hello? So obviously, both of them are exactly same. So computer also become uh, puzzled. Okay, computer also become confused and it is not able to. Uh, it is not able to uh, come to any conclusion like which function should it follow. So that's why it is not allowed. Using the same name is not allowed. Okay. But still, if you are strict, like, okay, I need to use the same name multiple times. So you need to go for something like either you need to uh, change the number of parameters. Then you can use the same name. Okay, let me write it in this way. You can use the same name if you change the number of parameters. If you change, okay, sorry, if you change the type of parameters, if you change the sequence of parameters, I'll be showing you each one of them. Okay, let me present all the examples. So change of parameter means if you suppose, uh, 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 let me present uh, one example. Just give me one minute. So if I go to our program, so suppose here, if I write, suppose int x something so now if i call guha now you can see it is allowed so now if i write guha then it will print hello if i write guha 5 then it will print hi if i run you can see you can try all those things uh, in your machine as well so if i run so the first one will print hello and the next one will print hi because now you are also able to understand so this blank one will call this blank one and this Guha 5 will call this one. Now, how can I differ with the type of parameter? So the first one I have already proved. If you change the number of parameters, parameters or argument, then you can use the same name. Now, if you change the type of parameters, then also you can use the same name. Let me copy and paste. Just use simple examples. Just use simple example. Do not go for some tough examples. Suppose double X and let me write it by here. So now if I write Guha 5 and if I write the number of parameters are same, but the type of parameters, one is int, another one is double. So if I write 5.0, so it will call the another, the last function that will print by. Okay. So you can simply, you can also as a human, you can also segregate, you can also guess like, okay, which function will be called. Okay. So computer is the same. Computer also can understand. Okay, so the Guha 5.0, that means I need to go for the double X. It is very simple. So now the last thing, the sequence of parameters, suppose let me present this. Okay, let me delete this one. Let me use something in text and suppose double Y. So the number of parameters and the type of parameters are both are same, but the sequence is different. So here first integer is being called, then double and here First double is being called, then integer. So that means if I write something 5,2.3, that means it will call the high. And if I write something 5, uh, 2.3, 5, then it will call by. 
okay you can see here first integer then double that means it will go for this option it is very simple it is not that tough just look carefully and if it is double first and then integer then it will go for this function the name is same anyhow okay so using the same name by deferring the number of parameters or the type of parameters or the sequence of parameters is being called as overloading okay overloading means suppose one child is uh, bringing the same type of dolls or same type of toys in in his home i i remember in that way so that i do not need to memorize much so here the same thing you have a option to use use different names of function but why you are using the same name multiple times so if somehow you want to use the same name of the functions multiple times that is being called as a overloading so just you need to do three small things either you need to change the parameter or the type of parameter or the sequence of parameter remember if you change the return type that will not work interviewers will try to confuse you by mentioning this what i'm trying to mean let me show you suppose i have two functions again one is void another one is int that is probably returning something so can i create a overloading on the basis of return type let me present the data first suppose here it is void it is printing hi here it is printing by and i have i have to return something return uh, suppose return 10 something like that so if i call guha blank and if i call this guha int p will that work because you can simply you can simply segregate as a human like okay this guha is the void one it is not returning something and this guha is returning something that is this guha should be called but why computer is not able to understand why computer is not able to create the overloading or why computer is not able to create the same the function with the same name because but return type is different we can clearly segregate but why it is not happening because it function overloading always depend on the signature of the function we have just learned the meaning of signature signature means the name of the function and the and the parameters without the return type just revise the class once again i have just explained the meaning of function signature so overloading depends on the function signature but why because i can call this function int guha without storing the value as well what i'm trying to mean let me show you let me delete this one let me delete this one it is not like that always i have to receive that value inside some variable i always do not need to receive int p equals to guha if i want i can simply ignore receiving the value i can simply call that function itself so if i run it will also work int doesn't mean always i have to receive something i can simply ignore so now if i run this program okay where is the program yeah so if i run this program you can see it is simply printing by i'm i have not stored that return value somewhere so it is also possible to use this function in this way so now if it is the way so now suppose if i go back to our program in this way so now just tell me which function it should call will it call void guha or will it call int guha so it might possible that we are not receiving a value and we are referring to this function so it creates the confusion you need to know everything in and out it is not that tough chapter it is the easiest one but you need to know what is going inside why return type is not allowed in overloading got it overloading is allowed only for those three cases not for the return type interviewers occasionally frequently very frequently they will try to confuse you but you have to be stick on that part if you if you uh, give the answer by providing some uh, programming examples it will be very easy it will be very nice and uh, they will be impressed believe me and always go for these examples okay and uh, use simple examples do not go for the tough examples do not need to write uh, overloading programs with prime number checking with reverse number do not need to do that so anyway if i go to our group binary world computer science if you go to media and if you go to the album section you will get one album called front end exercise coding exercise basic sorry 
So you will get one uh, chapter here called function. You have to solve this thing and everything will be clear. Then. So if you are facing any problem, just let me know. The name is function or method. Okay, another name of function is method. You can call it method as well. So you just need to go through this exercise. If you are facing any challenges, just let me know in the comment section. If you are not able to solve any of this programming, again, let me know. I will try to share the uh, exercise solutions as well. So just let me know your, your problems. Okay, and this is one of the programs that can be done by uh, overloading. Just try to solve that one, okay? Otherwise, I will, I will try to help you, no issue. So all the links are mentioned in the detail section of this class. Okay, you can just go through the detail section, description, you will get all the details. Anyway, so this is the links all about. You can take a screenshot as well. You can pause the screen. So that's all. Just try to go through all function programs. It is really easy. You do not need to take the stress by thinking the tough logics. You just need to place the logic in a correct correct place. That's all you need to do here to make the simple make the program simpler. That is your target for this chapter. Okay. So yeah, that's all for the day. Uh, we will meet again with some new chapter again with the new class. Okay. Bye. Let me know in case of you are facing any trouble. Bye.